Got a nice cup of pumpkin spice coffee and no, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> Hello, Snarkotarians. What's up? It's Jess. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it's after Labor Day and apparently pumpkin spice is the only thing that determines when summer is actually finished. So, um, yeah, it's no more summer. No more summer. We have a couple days yet. I just can't do it. I can't. I am so over pumpkin spice. I mean, really, it's the beginning of September for crying out loud. Yes, football has started. Yes, the leaves are kind of changing a little bit. It's getting a little crisper at night. But I'm just, I, I have to snag and grasp onto the last few threads of summer. What can I say? I love summer. It's not to say that I don't like fall. I do like fall. But I would like fall more if uh, winter didn't follow. I hate being cold. And we have some cold winter sometimes in, uh, in, in Pennsylvania. So I don't like the dark. I like the daylight. I like to feel like I have time to get things done when I come home from work. And man, when that time change happens, forget about it, man. Forget about it. So what I decided to do for, I guess, my last video of the summer is do a summertime roundup. Things that I've come across over the summertime, whether it be not just makeup, but certainly makeup. Um, I'm going to talk about some TV shows. I'm going to talk about some clothes. I'm going to talk about some things that I haven't, uh, or at least one thing that I have that I haven't totally tried yet. I haven't even started using yet, but I'm really excited about it. If you have cats, you might be excited about it too. So I will talk about that at the end. So we're going to start with some makeup. And we're going to go back to, some would say that this, eyeshadow look is a uh, pumpkin spice fall inspired it's not no nay nay no it's not because i got this teal thing going on i'm going with like a summer summer sunset vibe we're not talking about pumpkin spice anymore we're done we're done with the spice i naturally what i want to start with considering the fact that this is a makeup and skincare channel is i'm going to start with some of the makeup that i have been using quite frequently over the summer things that I have discovered. Uh, one thing that's been out for a little while that I recently discovered, but two things that were pretty new. And we're gonna talk about foundations. The first one is the, the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover Foundation. And this is in the shade, my current shade is 120 Classic Ivory. Um, I know there have been a lot of, there's been a lot of talk that this is supposed to be kind of a dupe for the It Cosmetics your skin but better cc cream mm, there are some similarities but i i don't think that they're that similar um the packaging is somewhat similar however this is a squeezy literally a squeezy tube and the other one has a pump at the end of it the only similarities that they have i personally think is the fact that there is an spf of 50 in both of them um this one is I guess chemical based. The other one is mineral based. Uh, this is much cheaper probably because of some of the ingredients um, than the cosmetic CC cream. But let me tell you, I started out with, I got a sample of the concealer, the Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer from a palette that I bought from It Cosmetics. And it was in the shade medium. And it actually worked really well. I'm fairly light skinned. Um, I would say light, mm, light to medium. And, um, it worked really well with my skin. So I think kind of without trying anything, I don't remember if I swatched in the store or not. Probably not. Uh, but I got the medium tone foundation or the CC it cream. So dark. I mean, it's a good five shades darker than what my skin actually is. But I used it all up. I made it work. And then I decided in the next one, I did replenish it. And I decided to go with the light, which would make sense. It worked a little bit better, but it was still too dark. I would probably say a good two shades too dark for my complexion. Finish that one up anyway. And then they came out with a couple in between shades, which was really nice. Super excited about that. So I ended up getting the fair to light. Shade was perfect. It works so well on my skin. However, I don't, I don't feel like it performed as well as the other two. I had so I'm not exactly sure what was going on with that it is definitely a dewy foundation maybe they changed the formula a little bit but I just don't like the way it has been sitting on my skin when I use it so you know I thought I would give this a try but I actually like this one 
a lot better. I have to say, this is one of those things where it just kind of blends seamlessly into my skin. It's more of a satin. I would say it's not a dewy, shimmery foundation by any stretch of the imagination. It's not matte, certainly, either, but it's a great in-between. I find it to be more of a natural kind of satin, maybe a little um, glow by the end of the day, but it just, it feels pretty weightless. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel thick. It doesn't feel sticky at all or anything, and I think it wears really well throughout the day. So this I have been using quite a bit, one of my favorite favorites, and I will certainly, I do have a darker shade, but I will probably be wearing this pretty much throughout the fall as well. This is going to be in my repertoire of foundations. The other one I talked about, uh, I did do a video on that a review, and I will link it above, is the NYX Born to Glow foundation, and I have this in BTGRF 6.5 Nude. Um, the color is a little off. It's a little on the yellow side, but again, I like this. I wore this several times, you know, put this kind of in. There were four major foundations that I was wearing pretty much throughout the summer season. This was definitely in the rotation, you know, once I tried it. It came out maybe midsummer. Um, again, I'll link that above. But it is glowy. It is dewy. It doesn't um, wear as well as the Maybelline throughout the day. But I really liked it. I think it performed well, and it's $10. You know, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, but I like it. It works well. I have uh, combo to dry skin, a little bit more combo now in the summertime. If you are not familiar with this channel, it's the first time you're joining me. Hey, hi! But I tend to run right now a little bit more combo than on the dry scale, but in the wintertime, I definitely go dry. So this, um, this one worked out really well. Next, the next one, uh, the third of the four that I used was one, like I said, that has been around a little bit longer, I believe. I saw Alana Davis use this, and um, I thought it would be perfect for the summertime when I went on way on vacation. And this is the Clinique Even Better Glow. This is in the shade WN38. A little, a little dark for me right now. It worked perfectly for me when um, the hair on my lip. It worked perfectly for me when I was at the beach. It's super simple. I didn't, if I didn't want to bring a lot of brushes and a sponge and stuff like that, I didn't need to with this. I just used my fingers. I just kind of smoothed it on and it had a nice even glow, not heavy. It's more of a, a light coverage kind of thing. Gave me a nice glow, wore well throughout the day. Got a little um, dewy by the end of the day, certainly, but it's a nice kind of change up. I am debating. There's a new one that came out, I believe, the Even even Better Refresh, which I'm kind of interested in. If you are interested in me giving it a try, please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. I would love to know uh, things that you were interested in, things that I would like to review. So leave comments down below for me, please. So the fourth one that I used uh, kind of in my summer repertoire was the Flower Beauty um, Illuminating Foundation, which has been out forever, so I didn't necessarily feel like I wanted to chat about that. I have been using some cream blushes, uh, the Flower uh, Blush Balm and Pinch I really like. I just did a video on the Physician's Formula Organic Wear, and one of those was a cream. I will link that above too. I really like that. Um, I think it's a really pretty color, and I like the way that they wear throughout the day. So I was really excited when I saw ColourPop came out with blush cream sticks. Um, that I got which one is this? I think this is the poppy one. It also came with a highlighter. I don't like the highlighter as much. I think the color itself is really pretty, but when it wears away, you're just kind of left with a lot of glitter. So I've um, been using the blush sticks. This is in Aloha. This is a little darker. I'm going to swatch this for you. I'm so good at the swatches. So the top one is under pressure, which is what I'm, what I have on my face today. By the way, I am wearing the Maybelline, um, Urban Dream Urban Cover Foundation on my face today, and it looks fantastic. And um, the one below is Aloha. So I think, again, these wear throughout the day pretty nicely. If you want an extra pop of, you know, blush and staying power, put a similar color of powder on top of it just lightly, and I guarantee you it's not going to budge. So between the two, um, this is a lot more uh, corally, poppier. This one's a little bit more peachy muted. But I like both of them. Um, again, I think they wear pretty, pretty well throughout the day. I do set them with a powder, which is what I'm going to talk about next. For somebody who doesn't really like powder all that much, um, I did get this recently in my last BoxyCharm. This is the Becca 
Hydra Mist setting powder. This stuff is so, so cool. I won't talk too much about it because I did chat about it uh, in my last boxy charm. But it's just the weirdest, it's the weirdest little consistency. It feels wet. It does a nice job kind of mattifying my pores, even though it's a Hydra powder. But it does mattify a bit. Um, it kind of keeps me less dewy throughout the day. It just feels very refreshing on hotter days. So um, I do like that. Again, I will link that above. That's my last, my August BoxyCharm video. So check that out. And the last makeup product I want to talk about is another thing that I got in the BoxyCharm. I think this was the July BoxyCharm. This is the Tardis Pro Glow Face Palette. Um, I am wearing a, the, the warmer of the two <laughs> bronzers over here uh, as a bronzer and then I'm also kind of mixed the two highlighters and um, I took this on vacation and just kind of used this primarily. I used it for all kinds of things. I used it for highlight. I used it for my blush. I used it which makes sense because that's what's in here but I also used the bronzers as for eyeshadow as well and it worked out really easily. It worked out really simply um, I will take this on my next vacation as well, but uh, this just worked out really well for me. So I think that's it as far as the makeup goes. Um, next thing I'm gonna talk about is my newest obsession. I'm wearing one of those today. These are t-shirt dresses. Kind of hard to see. I'll, I'll insert a couple of pictures that uh, the new ones that I got. I have just, I don't know where these have been all my life. I've, I have some. It was funny, I was walking around Walmart um, few weeks ago and they had a couple of these t-shirt dresses on clearance including the one that I'm wearing in this dare I say eagle's green color hmm. and uh, they also had a rust color they were on clearance for nine dollars and fifty nine cents I highly doubt that I could find any kind of link for this um, but it's really nice it has pockets like I said I'm going to insert a couple pictures of the ones that I have bought recently um, but they're so easy they're so travel friendly i'm so excited because i do have i do have a couple that i gotten before i have a couple sweatshirt ones but i guarantee you i'm going to take these on vacation i'm going to take a lot of these on vacation the best thing about it is you can wear it as is if it tends to get a little cooler you can throw a sweater on top if it gets even colder and you don't want your legs to be so cold you can certainly put a pair of leggings on and then it gets warm again you can take that stuff off and you have a cute little dress and it's multi-seasonal as far as I'm concerned. I just bought a few more off of New York and Company. They're kind of sweatshirt dresses too, so I'm excited to wear those. Um, but I got one uh, from Amazon, which I will show you. And then I also got one from, oh, I got two from Amazon. This one, like I said, is from Walmart. Uh, and then I got two from Amazon. I should be able to find the links for that. So I will link those down below if you're interested. But I'm going to show you the ones that I got here right now. my spices enjoy my spices this is one that i got from amazon this is more like a jersey knit like uh, workout material but the sleeves are rolled up here super cute and v-neck which i love and then it has like a little knot detail here a little rich rich detail knot detail at the side but it's super comfy This one's a little fancier, a little dressier. I love the green color. It is super soft. It is definitely cotton, more cotton than the other ones. Um, it's rich, rich on this side. And then there's also uh, like a asymmetrical seam here, which is really cool. The cool thing about this is it's also lined. I wore this last weekend at uh, the Labor Day picnic and it's just super comfy super easy going i like it no pockets but it's rich which i think is a technical pa dutch term not fashion all right so one of the things that i am fairly new to but have been enjoying quite a bit is a good podcast um i don't subscribe to things very easily so when i heard that samantha ravendahl was doing her own podcast with her uh with her good friend Alyssa, 
I had seen them, you know, on her YouTube channel before and they just had a fun chemistry and they made me laugh and I enjoyed it. So when I found out that they were doing a podcast called Approachable, I figured how bad could it be? And quite honestly, it's, it's quite good. Um, there is a bit of an age difference between myself and Samantha, but, um, they're very smart. They have great conversations. They've had one, they had one on millennials that really made me think. And I'm like talking to them as I'm driving to my parents' house, listening to this, I'm talking about it, but, um, they're very wise for their, for their age, considering they're millennials. And I am, I am a Gen Xer. Absolutely. Um, but if, if, uh, you know who Samantha is. I'm sure you probably already have been listening to the podcast, but it is quite, it is quite good. They cover all kinds of topics. Um, they cover imposter, syn imposter syndrome, um, kind of body positivity issues, drug addiction, relationship things, past relationships. I mean, they're pretty open books, and uh, I appreciate that. I think their humor is... is top notch and I really do enjoy that. So this is approachable. I personally get it on iTunes or the iTunes podcast. So, um, look for that there. I will leave a link below through that particular podcast. I started listening to the papaya podcast and this is from Sarah Nicole. I said Sarah Michelle before, and I think I was thinking of Buffy, the vampire slayer, Sarah Michelle Geller. So that was totally wrong. Sarah Nicole, who's Canadian, um, and they did a podcast with her. Sam Samantha Ravendahl did a podcast with her. She was on Approachable talking about her papaya podcast, and they were talking about a lot of body issues, um, body positivity, and things like that. And I really enjoy her as well. I follow her on Instagram. Um, she's very interesting. She has an interesting outlook on life and, you know, being a woman, being a mother, um, being in the public eye, um, she's kind of a breath of fresh air. So I suggest that you check her out too. Going on a darker note, um, I am a huge Bravo fan. I have mentioned that before. One of the series that I did not watch, I don't know why, but I'm going to now, was Dirty John. I did not realize that that was an actual thing, that this happened. It was taken from a story um, a very successful woman who was single decided that she was going to go looking for love again. She had a couple grown daughters, uh, some in, I guess in their twenties, early to mid late twenties. And she meets this guy by the name of John and there, this woman is smart. She runs her own business. I can't remember if it's real estate or decorating, um, internal design, internal interior design business, but she's smart and very quickly blinded by the potential of love. She marries this guy very quickly with all kinds of red flags. Her kids get very upset with her and, um, man, that, that was a nail biter. And now I probably, I have a feeling I want to watch the, uh, the Bravo series. So I will do that. But if you're into that kind of like murder, mystery, unsolved crime, things like that, check it out. It is, it just boggles my mind. It boggles my mind what people do for love. And, uh, damn girl, even darker. <laughs> I, I work in the medical field. I was, I kind of took notice of this podcast called Dr. Death. This all takes place in Texas. Again, this is true crime stuff. The truth is scarier than fiction. It's frightening. I unbelievable in the medical field. Um, this guy did surgery, surgery on people's spines and killed them <laughs> basically. And somehow, uh, stayed under the radar and, um, managed to keep injuring and, and hurting and killing people. Um, he, um, has paralyzed his best friend and this poor guy is just living with being a quadriplegic because of this maniacal egotistical socio psychopath it's like i said the truth is is crazier than fiction so maybe that's why i am drawn to these kinds of things that is something if you're if you're into that kind of thing check out dr death i haven't finished the podcast yet but i literally knowing what some spine surgery entails because I kind of work in that in orthopedics. I'm 
taking a shower, listening to this, and just crying, hearing what some of these people went through, what he put these people through, what he did, just careless, careless acts. It just, it, it's nauseating, but man, I want to hear justice. There's got to be some justice out there, so I will continue to listen to that. So those are the ones that I'm listening to right now. So moving, I, I think the um, Dr. Death segue works into a new television series that Matt and I have been watching. Thank you, Mom and Dad. My mom used to watch ID all the time. Now she doesn't have it. She got to the point where she knew all of them and she knew what was going to happen. So she suggested Mindhunter on Netflix. You know, Matt and I were looking for, if you've been a subscriber and have watched some of my videos, you may know that Matt and I were very much into Game of Thrones. However, you know, reluctantly we got into it. And once we started watching it, we loved it. We were very depressed when it was over and we've been trying to find something to kind of take the place of that. Um, tried a couple things and nothing really stuck. <laughs> So we have been watching Mindhunter. Uh, they put up the second season a few weeks ago. And apparently there was quite a bit of time in between the first two seasons. So I think my mom said like five years. No, three years. Two, year, two or three years. So they do have an extension for five seasons. So hopefully there will be less time in between those seasons um, coming up. But it's basically, if I can get this story right, it's how... The FBI got into um, profiling, uh, serial killer profiling. They actually coined the term serial killer um, at this point in the 70s. And they're talking to Kemper, they're talking to Manson, they're talking to um, Son of Sam. I'm hoping Ramirez is in here at some point. Ugh. Spine, spine tingling just to see their reactions um, and their conversations and, and things. And I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of this is true to fact, that this is how these people are. These are the conversations that they had. Um, these people are already caught. They've already been um, sentenced to jail and they're living out their terms. And um, though it would be interesting to get into the mind of a serial killer, how do you do that? Well, you have to go talk to them, right? As disturbing as it is, I don't know how they did it. It, I, it's, it's gruesome. It's gruesome. And just the relationships that actually formed with the one agent and Kemper <laughs> is actually quite, an, quite enjoyable. We are liking that uh, plot line. So it's good. We haven't finished the second season yet. I keep falling asleep. We watch it like at nine o'clock at night and I inevitably fall asleep. So I have to go back and catch up again. But it is a fantastic series. I'm happy that they are going to continue this for a few more seasons. I'm excited to hear, you know, there might be a Dahmer in there. There might be a Bundy. There might be a, um, who is the clown dude? Uh, John Wayne Gacy. Speaking of clowns, I'm not going to go see it. No. I know it's, it looks like a fantastic movie. I love Bill Hader. I want to see that. I want to see uh, McAvoy in it. And um, I just can't. I can't. I tried the first one with the kids. Excellent movie. I can't get past that damn clown coming through the screen. No. No, thank you. This segue. <laughs> the magic of Instagram. I um, do look at Instagram. I don't post as much as I'd like to on there. But whew, I got a major head rush. And we're back. Um, I found an ad for the Kitty Poo Club. KittyPooClub.com. And basically what this is, is a litter box that is delivered to you once a month. One, you, they recommend doing one litter box per cat. I do have a second litter box downstairs in the basement where they like to go as well, but I thought I'd at least give this a try. Once a month, delivered to your door. It is a cardboard box. As you can see, inside are crystal granules. Um, I also got a dome to put on top of it because my current litter boxes have domes on it because my other cat, Sophie, likes to pee upward. Um, so there is a dome that you buy once, put it together, and then just put it on your, you know, each new litter box that you get. I think that was like $3 extra. Um, and then you just wrap it up at the end of the month and you throw it in the trash can. And I've seen a couple of reviews on this. I've seen some how to's on this and everybody has been raving about it. So I haven't tried it yet. I just want to get the litter down in the litter box that I have upstairs currently. And then I will be giving this a try. If you are interested, I will leave 
a link down below. Um, it does benefit me. I guess I get Kitty Poo Club points and uh, they go towards other boxes, other um, your next shipments and things like that. But uh, check it out. If you have cats and this interests you, <laughs> I highly suggest at least looking at the website and, and seeing what this does because I'm fascinated by this and I'm excited to try it. I will give you an update, I promise. The only thing you have to do is scoop out the poop and the um, crystals absorb the urine and kind of release the water portion of the urine. So it's supposed to trap the smelly part of the urine so it doesn't stink. And um, you're good to go. You get a fresh litter box every month. And let me just tell you, I hate cleaning. I don't mind scooping the litter box, that's fine. I hate cleaning the litter box and scrubbing the sides and getting all that crap off of it and then rinsing it off and drying it off, putting the litter back in there. And these are thick granules as well. These are like, like I said, like crystal granules. So it shouldn't track all over the floor, but I'm excited to try it. I will be trying it soon. I will give you an update. I will link it below. So I think that's it. That's the best of the summer that I have come across this year. Um, I've really enjoyed these products. I've enjoyed listening to the podcast. I'm loving my t-shirt dresses. I could wear them all the time if I could, and I will when I go on vacation. What did you find this season? What what really kind of piqued your interest and what did you continue to use throughout the summer that really, really worked for you? Please leave that down below. Leave a comment below. And if you like this video, if you got some information from it, please give it a thumbs up. While you're here, subscribe. Join, join the Snarkitarians. Join the Snarkitarian family. Um, no pressure. None at all. No big deal. But subscribe. And ring the notifications bell. I try to upload once a week currently. I try to on the weekends. Um, and follow me on Instagram at the pesky snarkitarian. And do your best, my friends, to always stay as snarky as possible. I will see you in my next video. Bye.